My name is uh, Jason Walter. I've, um, I am the head of school. I've worked at Delia School of Canada since uh, 1998. Uh, I joined the school, um, came from Canada, and I, I joined and taught a grade four classroom. And um, during the time from 1998 to now, I've seen the school um, grow. I've seen the number of students at the school increase, and we've become a much more diverse school. Another thing I've witnessed in the 22 years I've been here is the success of our students. Um, and that success is built around really our vision. And our vision really, uh, as Delia School of Canada, is to inspire all students uh, towards excellence, to be the best they can be, and contribute to a better, better world. And this vision uh, is founded on our mission, which is to provide an inclusive, multicultural and caring environment to inspire students to develop their social, their intellectual, emotional and physical abilities to contribute positively to the global community. And that statement about our mission uh, really says a lot about how uh, students will experience learning at DSC. Uh, for us here, learning um, is uh, a multi uh, facet. There's many different ways that we encourage students to learn and um, because of that students are successful. Next slide. And uh, our six core values which we uh, build all of our school planning around include multicultural and caring environment. So we're really looking at fostering an inclusive school culture. Um, these skills that students learn are, are, are vital in today's global economy and help ensure students, no matter where they go to university, will be ready for whatever challenges they face. Uh, we also focus on student success in our planning. And uh, now, perhaps more than ever, our focus on wellness and balance is um, key to student success. Um, here at Delia School of Canada, we really want to promote a positive sense of self and belonging because we know that unless a student feels safe and belonging to a community, uh, it's un they're, they're challenged to learn. So when they feel safe and feel part of a community, learning is a bit easier. We also focus on global citizenship, diversity, and opportunity. Now today we're gonna focus a little bit on this core value around opportunity. Because really what we're looking at for opportunity is providing a rich learning environment with a number of um, secondary programs so that students can discover their passions and then pursue their passions into secondary education. And that starts um, as early as grade seven and eight, where students start beginning to think about what do I want to do after high school? Next slide. And I wanted to share this slide before we, we move on. This slide looks at the post-secondary destinations of our students over the last five years. Now, I wanted to share this slide because you can see that 32% of our students go to Canada. Now, some people would assume that because we're a Canadian curriculum school, that our students' university pathways are only to Canada. In fact, our students are successful in getting in universities all over the world. This year, we're bringing in um, some experts from ARCH to help uh, increase the number of students to successfully get into UK universities and US universities. And I also want to share with everyone um, the last, last year's 2019-20 graduating class and what fields they went into when they entered university. I think this is an important slide to share because it really speaks to the diversity of our program. At Delia School of Canada, we want the student experience to be built on and around what the student wants to pursue. So we have a number of programs and rich offerings to ensure that if students want something and they want to enter a specific program in university, we can help support that, be it uh, medicine, uh, engineering, any of the science fields, business, arts, or even if uh, students' um, post-secondary education isn't at the university level, but might be at even the college level or, or other areas.
I'm going to introduce now uh, Mr. Alan Morrison, the principal of the secondary section, and he's going to talk a little bit more specifically about some of the processes and programs we have at the secondary level to assist and help students to succeed. Okay, thank you, Dr. Walter, and welcome parents. As mentioned, my name is Alan Morrison. I'm the principal of the secondary section. I'm very excited to have this opportunity to highlight the many great benefits of a DSC education and how the Ontario Secondary School Diploma will provide a solid foundation and support your child in achieving his or her post-secondary goal. I have been with DSE since 2013, uh, working as deputy principal in both elementary and secondary sections. So I'm very familiar with the great teaching and learning, not only by working here, by experiencing the very positive school environment firsthand. But in addition, my son graduated from Delia and seeing his growth and development from a child and student being nurtured by exceptional teachers, making global friendships to the adult he is today uh, has been truly inspiring. Uh, he has just recently finished his undergraduate degree at the University of Toronto uh, and is currently starting a master's at the University of London. So a DSE education is an opportunity to go anywhere you want. And that's what I really want to focus on, on today. Now, I want to start broad looking at why a Canadian education. Now, certainly, if we look at Canada, it consistently scores near the very top on international standards testing. Many of you may be familiar with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development's Program for International Student Assessment. Typically, we say the PISA results. Canada has been there consistently in the top, and it certainly not has not been a one-off, but rather Canada has consistently demonstrated over the years that its system has outperformed many countries in this international test. Uh, and as recognized um, in the past, 2017, with the BBC, you know, Canada was recognized as one of a handful of countries to appear in the top 10 for maths, science, and reading. So, Canada has done exceptionally well and continues to do so in terms of global rankings. Let's focus a little more on Ontario and why an Ontario education ESC is highly valuable. Again, Ontario has paralleled, if not been above Canada in overall PISA tests. Now, a main reason for that has been on the quality of education that the Ontario Ministry of Education curriculum and their assessment and evaluation practices provide. Certainly in Ontario and in our, our uh, methodology of teaching, we look at supporting the each and every student to their full potential. And we also look at the whole child. And by that, I mean, you know, we're just not looking at test scores and, and you know, performing on standardized tests. We do look at cognitive development, looking at, looking at use of strategies for learning, brain development, areas in that. But we also focus on the emotional development, the social development, and the physical development of the child. So as Dr. Walter talked about when he looked at the mission of our school, you know, the Ontario curriculum as a foundation provides an exceptional uh, strength to that mission where we're looking at, looking at inspiring students to develop their social, emotional, uh, uh, intellectual, and physical capabilities and abilities uh, at Delia School of Canada. Certainly also Ontario has been looked at in terms of uh, a leader at the forefront of educational pedagogy and assessment evaluation strategies. Uh, you know, if I think in my own career over the last 10, 10 12 years, uh, Ontario has been very instrumental in California, New Zealand, Australia, pedagogical changes that came out uh, in 2010. So a lot of research, a lot of contributing to uh, making education stronger across the system. And certainly at uh, our school, by utilizing the Ontario curriculum, again, I've mentioned it's well respected, so it's certainly a strong choice for you in your child's education. It not only focuses on uh, 
uh, knowledge, but rather on how to use higher level thinking and apply that uh, in meaningful ways. And no matter uh, where your child enters in DSE, whether it be from PG1 to grade 12, you know, you will, your child will receive the key competencies required to not only be successful here at our school and in post-secondary, wherever they decide to go, but certainly in addition to that, in terms of being prepared for the demanding challenges uh, of the 21st century. Now, when we look at the benefits of the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, that's what students receive when they graduate, having met all the graduation requirements uh, from our high school program in grade nine to 12. And our guidance team will be looking at that moment. But certainly the Ontario program is very broad, it's rigorous and it's well-rounded. The students are challenged intellectually, as I mentioned before, you know, looking at the whole child allowing them to grow socially, focusing on independent thinking and advanced problem solving skills. It's internationally recognized. And I think that's so vitally important. You know, I do get a lot of parents, even when in the elementary section saying, well, my child's going into grade one, but can they get into Harvard with the OSSD? And most certainly they can. And we'll look at that. So it's internationally recognized diploma, very strong curriculum, strong university-bound academic program. And again, you know, there's no limits. You can go to any university. Looking at the slide Dr. Walter showed, we have students going all over the world to go to post-secondary studies. So I think that's very, very important as, uh, as parents and, their, and your child look at next steps, the recognition that we can get you there. Now, in terms of our curriculum, you can see here that it's quite a very broad range of courses that we offer. Um, and here I'm really focusing in on not only grade 7 to 12, but across the board. You can see the different departments in, in languages, math, science, PE, computer studies, technology, sociology, so the humanities. So depending on what your child is interested in, uh, we can certainly, uh, you can see how you can get there. And equally important, I think is that when a student gets into grade 11, the breadth of choices increases. A lot of our courses in grade nine and 10 are prerequisite courses. So by the time you get to grade 11 and 12, the majority of prereqs are, are behind you. So it's not like some other systems where you have you know, six groupings and you have to pick so many courses from each grouping. There's a little more flexibility. And then students will start to cluster courses around their interests. So if I really want to study business, at Rotman in Toronto, then I can, you know, focus more on the business courses uh, at that stage in grade 11 and 12. And certainly, uh, with our teaching and learning, we have, you know, the technology has been integrated throughout the system. We're a one-to-one -one iPad in grade one to three, one-to-one -one laptop from four to 12. We have, you know, two dedicated ICT educational specialists supporting teachers and students. You know, we have a very strong web-based learning platform, and this really came into uh, importance and, and re recognized how well we were in terms of our online presence in February after Chinese New Year, when students went full-on online learning. You know, a lot of collaboration with one-to-one -one online and face-to-face, -face, and certainly looking at the importance of inquiry-based learning activities and infusing uh, curriculum-based field trips so that you know, students are uh, getting out of the classroom and into the field and applying their knowledge and skills. Now, I think another very important area that ties directly to our, you know, how Ontario's assessment and evaluation practices are, is we're not a school, we're not a system that focuses strictly on content and driving knowledge and learning to a standardized exam. We focus on four areas and a student is evaluated on all four areas in a fairly balanced approach where we're looking at, you know, knowledge and understanding, focusing on content. We're looking at, okay, what do we do with that? And we look at communication, explaining what you know and how to convey meaning to that knowledge. We look at thinking, using critical thinking skills, and problem solving skills that I referred to before. 
And equally important, we look at application and how we take that information and we apply it to different contexts. So all three of these areas fall into a higher level of thinking strategies and higher level of teaching and learning. So altogether, when we look at just rote learning, our system is very different where that really takes up 25%. And so much more important is how and what we do with that information. And that's what's gonna prepare your child for university and equally for the 21st century. In terms of your evaluation, as I mentioned, this will also, when we have projects and students are working assignments, they're evaluated on all four sections. So again, it ties very much uh, into our assessment and evaluation. Now, in our next section, looking at student support and DSC, it's really looking at how we can support students to achieve their dreams. Dr. Walter showed you the, the universities that we go to, we're grounding in our mission and our vision, different areas that they study in. Plus, part of the equation of student support. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, our two guidance counselors in the secondary section, uh, Mrs. Murray and Mrs. Shinef Kamol. Uh, and they're going to outline areas of how we support students to achieve their dreams. Okay, thank you, Mr. Morrison. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Sabina Shinef Kamol, and I'm going to talk to you about some student supports. So as guidance counselors, we focus on helping students to recognize their strengths, meet their academic aptitudes, and develop the resilience and adaptability that is really essential for our changing world. From the moment a student joins the Delia community, they have our full support in their academic success and overall well-being. We even maintain contact with Delia students once they've graduated through our alumni. So once you join the Delia community, you really never leave. Students can expect support in their transitions into and within our secondary program as it relates to their work habits and learning skills, um, their post-secondary and career planning, as well as in meeting the Ontario Secondary School Diploma requirements. Next slide, please. Career and life planning starts early on to ensure that students are well informed about their opportunities and are well prepared for their transition to post-secondary education or life in general. So throughout, their, throughout secondary school, students have various experiences that increase their self-awareness and help them learn more about opportunities available to them in their future. So as Mr. Morrison mentioned, beginning in grades seven and eight, students begin participating in our individual pathway planning program, which aims to help students recognize their strengths and aptitude and identify potential careers. The pathway program continues through to graduation. So in grade eight, we begin working closely with students as they start their course selection and planning process to meet the OSSD requirements, as well as um, any additional university entrance requirements. So from grade nine, student counseling really does become increasingly more individualized. And during these individualized sessions, we help students make the most informed decisions about their post-secondary studies, career choices, and other life goals. Um, as a first step, we closely monitor and provide counseling uh, to meet the graduation requirements. But of course, we assist in their understanding of university requirements around the world and aid them in, the nav in navigating those uh, application processes. Next, please. Um, essential to our role as guidance counselors is to ensure the well-being of our students. So a positive sense of uh, well-being is really critical to academic success. Therefore, we help students with things like stress management, positive self-esteem, and the maintenance of healthy relationships. We are continuously developing programs that are driven by student need that will improve overall student resilience. Next, please. Um, the guidance team organizes a wide variety of events and activities throughout the school year. Um, some of our biggest events include our university fairs that are usually held from late September to early November. And fairs provide an opportunity for students to speak directly to university representatives about programs and entrance requirements. Um, in the past, we've held Canadian and Hong Kong university fairs that have been a huge success. 
And in addition to those fairs, we do arrange for individual school visits from universities from around the world. So we really try to um, connect students to global opportunities. We also host a series of workshops that are focused on the post-secondary application process. Uh, workshops include information that ranges from basic introductions to application processes, to personal statement and CV writing, and so on. And at various points throughout the school year, we also prepare and deliver presentations that relate to well-being, which are targeted at both students and parents. Next slide, please. The guidance team is just one branch of a much larger network of student support that we have available at the Delia School of Canada. Students have access to a number of supports, which include on-site social workers providing additional counseling in the secondary section. They also have access to an inclusive education specialist and student support team who work collaboratively, collaboratively to ensure strategies, accommodations, and interventions are in place to foster student success when needed. And lastly, we have um, our two ICT education specialists whose goal is to support the integration of technology into cross-curricular learning in our classrooms and to offer workshops for teachers, parents, and students in our effective use of technology as well as to enhance student learning. Hi there, um, my name is Charisma Murray and I am the other guidance counselor here at Delia. Uh, so I will be talking about the university pathways. Uh, as mentioned previously by Dr. Walter, um, a lot of our students do end up going to many universities uh, across the world and this is just one and what we do really tries to help students get to that point and really get them to, uh, admitted into these universities. So one of the things, so as you can see from this slide here, our students graduate uh, our, or our graduate students are accepted to top universities around the world. They receive offers from many universities uh, as you can see on this next slide. Uh, so here's just a small list of all the universities that our students get accepted to. And as you can see, we're, uh, our students receive offers from um, uh, Canada, from the UK. Uh, this list actually contains almost, uh, almost all of these universities are actually within the top 100 universities, according to the Times Higher Education World Universities ranking. Uh, so some of the top universities that our students receive offers from for Canada, uh, there's the University of Toronto, University of British Columbia, and McGill University. Uh, from the UK, there's uh, UCL, so University, London, uh, University College London, and the London School of Economics. In the US, our students have been accepted to the University of California uh, from their different from the different campuses as well, so UCLA, UC Berkeley as an example, uh, as well as Columbia University. Uh, from Australia, you can see that they've been, uh, that our students have received offers from Sydney and Melbourne. In Japan, they've received offers from University of Tokyo and Kyoto University. And then here in Hong Kong, our students have received uh, offers from the top, from top three universities here in Hong Kong, that's the University of Hong Kong, the University of Hong Kong Science and, uh, sorry, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, as well as Chinese University of Hong Kong. And um, you can see here, all of these places, as I mentioned, are within the top 100 universities around the world. So our students are really traveling to many different places that are worldwide and well known. Next slide. And on top of receiving offers from uh, these top universities, our students are also participating in many uh, competitions and events through, uh, throughout the school year. Uh, and they participate in events within Hong Kong as well as outside of Hong Kong. Uh, some of these um, part, uh, competitions include, uh, next slide please. Uh, so for business, they've received the top uh, they were they received the top team award for at the Asian Youth Social Entrepreneurship Association uh, that was for their business case competition uh, and they've actually received this award for multiple years so from 2015 uh, uh, to 2020 
within the Canadian World Studies and Social Sciences Department, uh, our students have participated in Model UN um, competitions, uh, conferences, sorry, uh, both one in China, um, uh, or sorry, in, yes, in Beijing. And then for the University of Waterloo, uh, our students have participated in their math contest there, and our students have actually ranked 353rd out of or out of the 26 students that are there, uh, 492, uh, sorry, is that 26 out of the 353 participants, and they've ranked uh, third, uh, our third of our students, or three of our students, sorry, have rated, ranked within the 96th percentile. Um, and then they've also participated in the, Young Hong, in the Hong Kong Young Writers Awards as well as the Harvard Book Prize. So you can see that our students, these events and competitions are within a variety of different fields. So it's not like it's just specific to one program. Our students are participating in many different programs uh, around, uh, are participating in many different competitions that focus on a field or a variety of subjects. Next slide. So want to just focus a little bit on how we can actually help our students get to this point. Uh, so for a Canadian university pathway, the general pathway for students at our school is that they will need to receive the Ontario Secondary School Diploma. So that's what they are working towards when they are studying with us at the secondary section. And then after this, they will then pursue their undergraduate degree. Um, after, after receiving their degree in uh, for example, their bachelor's degree. They can then move into a postgrad degree or a professional certification and really get that qualification that will get them into their career choice in uh, within a Canadian system. Uh, so as you can see, the Ontario Secondary School Diploma is widely accepted across many Canadian universities, you are not just going to get into a, an Ontario school. This could get you to any Canadian university, uh, any Canadian university, sorry. Uh, next slide, please. So there's a very simple application process for um, getting into a Canadian university. Uh, so one, as I mentioned, is that you need to receive or obtain your Ontario Secondary School Diploma. That's what you're working towards when you're studying at our school. Um, and then while you're working towards this diploma, you need to be taking specific courses in your grade 12 year. Uh, and that kind of depends on, your, on the program choice that you're hoping to study at university. So for example, students who are hoping to study a business program in university, they will need to complete grade 12 English, grade 12 advanced functions, and grade 12 calculus. Um, um, on top of this, they will also need to complete an English proficiency test, such as the IELTS test or the TOEFL test. And then on top of that, some university programs will also require supplemental documents, such as personal statements, portfolios, and admission interviews. Next slide. So how we help you with this is that as your guidance counselor, we will be able to provide you with that one-on-one -on -one support that you need in order to create an action plan. And this action plan is what we're going to uh, follow in order to get you from where you are right now to getting you admitted into the university of your choice uh, and helping you tackle those university admission applications. So we're going to be working closely with you to ensure that you are selecting the appropriate courses each year that you are here with us, so from grade 9, 10, 11, and 12, um, to make sure that you're meeting those admission requirements and that you have the best chance possible at getting into the university of your choice and the, and the program of your choice. So we will help you review those admission requirements, making sure that you understand the um, what you actually need to do in order to get you, uh, in order to complete your applications. And we will also help you review those, those supporting documents, such as your personal statements and your portfolios, um, to ensure that you are best prepared for completing those applications. And then lastly, what we also do with regards to the application process is we also follow up with a lot of our admission 
uh, representative contacts. Um, and so a lot of times if there was an issue with your application, we will be able to reach out to the appropriate people to find out how we can solve that issue. So we work very closely with you to make sure that you have as much support as you need to complete your, to complete your application and really get you to that next step after graduating from us. Uh, next slide. So as you can see, what we kind of do will then relate to how, what you're going to do later on. So a, a lot of times um, uh, what we try to do is tr really try to support you when you're trying to move it, make, making decisions about what you want to do. And as you can see on this slide, a lot of our students are, uh, a lot of our students or a lot of students, sorry, within the IB program are actually selecting universities that our students are also going to. So, so in this situation, as you can see from this slide, the top, the most popular universities that IB students attend, six of them are Canadian universities and almost all of and seven of these universities are universities that our students have received offers from so we are are very successful in trying to get our students to get to those um get to their top choices uh for post-secondary studies uh and and as a representation you could see that the canada uh, or sorry the canadian curriculum can really help get you to that point uh, and on this note, I will pass it back off to Mr. Morrison, who's going to tell you more about the differences between IB and Ontario. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Mrs. Murray. So I think that's a good transition into the next step, which is Ontario versus IB. And as you can see on that last slide, I mean, University of Toronto, University of British Columbia, very popular, globally speaking, with the, the thousands of IB schools, uh, and certainly, with the OSSD, the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, it does provide direct admissions to those universities, meaning direct access through the application process with, the, with our diploma. And what I want to focus on now is just, you know, over the years I've heard parents say to me that, you know what, my child needs to be an IB to get where they want to be. And the message, the main message I have here is that, you know, with Ontario, and Delia School of Canada, we can get you where you want to be, whether that be University of Toronto, UBC, Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, it doesn't matter because the OSSD can get you there. You know, a lot of it comes down to, to hard work and the support systems that I think was well described in terms of what we have in place here to support your child to getting where uh, they want to be for their post-secondary studies. Now, what I'd like to look at, this is not an exhaustive review, but rather highlighting the similarities of both systems between Ontario and the IB program. You know, there are more, uh, more similarities than, than differences. And, and certainly both systems uh, offer excellent programs. Uh, they have, you know, both very dynamic and query-based learning environments, you know, where students are actively engaged, challenging classes. You know, teachers understand the value of individual learning styles and strengths. Both will prepare students to be lifelong learners who actively participate in developing, you know, an understanding of the interconnectedness of the world around them. So there are a lot of similarities. Certainly when we look at the IB learner profile on the right and the Ontario achievement chart, learning skills and work habits on the left, you know, there's a lot of commonality between the two. And when you look at, you know, knowledge, thinking, communication, application that I outlined before in terms of how we teach and assess students. And we look at the learning skills from collaboration all the way down to independent work. You know, the cross referencing of the two between the uh, IB learning profile and Ontario is very compatible. When we look at the, the curriculum choices, you know, here we're looking at the prime PYP program. IB is broken into three three different programs, but here looking at the Ontario Elementary Program with language, math, science and technology, social science studies, health and PE, and you can see the similarities across the two. When we get into the, the, the diploma program in grade 11 and 12, certainly the Ontario Senior Division, our grade 11 and 12, as I mentioned, gives students great choice in course selection to focus on key subject areas in preparation for, for post-secondary. So the majority of of um, 
pre-required or compulsory courses are, are finished. You know, they certainly have math and, and English in grade 11 and 12, but it gives some students more flexibility to tailor their course selection. So I want to go into business. I'm going to take all six business courses or, you know, I don't need to take a group one or group two course in, in, in IB for, for those areas. So there is some flexibility there, greater flexibility. And also one thing I'm hearing quite recently from families coming to us is that, you know what, with the semester system, you know, in grade nine to 12, students can focus on four courses in each semester, as opposed to focusing on 12 or more courses in a non-semester year long program. And that's a big plus for students uh, where they can put all their energies into four courses, complete them, and then work on the next four courses. So uh, that has been good feedback from, from parents on how we structure the uh, school year. And certainly when we look at assessment, we can see again similarities where we're looking at assessment four as an of learning. Four is basic diagnostic for how students what they need to know, what they need to learn what they already know. As learning, looking at mastery of the expectations, supporting students by teacher and peer feedback. And then the assessment of learning where students are actually evaluated and given a grade. So I mean, a lot of similarities in structure. Uh, we don't have any standardized testing other than the high school graduation requirement of our literacy test in grade 10 but we don't have any uh, external exams in grade 11 or 12. There's no provincial exams. There's no external exams like you have with the, uh, the IBDP for that. So everything is evaluated in-house by their subject teachers. And, and certainly, uh, before I get to perceptions, I mean, we have, you know, the IB program has the, the CAS week, Creativity Activity Service Week. We have our experiential learning week where students can get community hours and do community service as part of the graduation requirement. All students have to have 40 hours of community service uh, for that. Uh, IB has an extended essay, you know, 4,000 word paper at the culmination of, of uh, the VP program. But in our courses, we integrate those extended essays uh, into subjects like grade 11, 12 English and the social science courses. So university preparation, writing is a strong focus, research and writing is a very strong focus throughout, threaded throughout all of our subject areas. Uh, and I wanted to leave off with perceptions, because again, when parents say to me, my child must be an IB to get to the University of Toronto and the Ontario Secondary School Diploma will get you to Toronto in terms of direct um, access. Um, I, did a little bit of research and was wondering, well, let's have a look. And certainly uh, there are some academic papers out there focusing on perceptions of IB in Ontario, coming out of uh, Ontario. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to the skill set of the student. And I talked about, you know, the hard work as opposed to any curriculum, whether it be Ontario, British, IB, you know, that will demonstrate success. Uh, and there was definitely uh, in the literature a scarcity of empirical research to support any claims. Interestingly enough, both from within and without, within the IB organization and from outside in terms of academic research. Uh, and the perception of the IBDP in particular, because a lot of parents will focus on that you know, as a rigorous and challenging curriculum, uh, it certainly uh, comes, doesn't come down to, I don't want to simplify things, but it certainly comes down to a lot of uh, the power behind the marketing with IB putting a lot of marketing into, uh, into that perception. So I just wanna have a look at that before we move on. Now it's also uh, my pleasure to, to introduce uh, Ms. Ruby Fu and Mr. Roger Din from Arch Education. And uh, they will be outlining the arch education with a focus on university pathways to the United States and to the United Kingdom.